Well, how's everybody doing? Uh, it's been a minute. Sorry, we had some technical difficulties for a while. We had to buy some new gear. Uh, anyhow, talking about this uh, this week of fishing, this last couple of weeks of fishing. Honestly, I'm I'm really excited. This is probably uh, it, this might might be the best or the second best time of year to fish. We're starting to get some really nice weather. The, I mean, I'm looking outside right now, it's beautiful. And we're gonna have these smatterings of rain, it sounds like for the next couple of days, which is perfect. It's great for steelhead fishing. If you wanna do some steelhead fishing, uh, there's, this is probably, you know, in the next two weeks, the best, best time of year to fish, period. Especially this year. So we had a bunch of fish in the lower river, um, on our local river, Sluts Alsea, hanging out in the lower river, just kegged up, uh, waiting for some rain and waiting for the water temps to do something different because they were cold for a really long time. Matter of fact, February was terrible and February is usually amazing. So this is the time to be out, uh, getting after some steelhead, swinging some flies. Um, you know, if you want to egg fish for them too, that's fine. You know, indicator style, perfectly fine. Um, I, I wouldn't do that myself this time of year because this is the time of year to get one on the swing but uh, you know it's probably more effective to throw an indicator not gonna lie anyhow uh, trout fishing is about to turn on and I would suggest you get on out there uh, Dylan Gorman and I our head guide here at the shop went him and I went out on the McKenzie on Monday we did a pretty good long float and as you might expect it was a little bit slow in the beginning we had some really cold water temps but it turned on and we ended up catching several fish caught a, a few nice red sides some nice cutthroat pile of uh white fish and heck we even caught a steelhead so you know thing, things are happening the the bugs were coming out a little bit we saw a few march browns um a day earlier than that i had a friend go out on sunday and they actually got into a nice march brown hatch um, and we're able to catch some fish. We didn't get any on the dry. We did see, I think, two or three fish rise and we tried to get after them, but you know, it's kind of one of those one hit wonders of fish just curious towards the top, which happens. So um, we did some trout space stuff. That was, that was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't unbelievably successful. I think once that, once the water temps come up, that's gonna be amazing. Uh, like it was last year. It was really, really good last year. And, you know, that's, that's what we do. That's what I do when I bring people down the river. That's a big priority for me. I want them to learn something different. There's not very many people that, that fish with a, a little micro spay rod, as we like to call them. Uh, and so if you want to learn that, uh, I, I personally teach lessons and, um, and do trips for that. So, you know, if you take a trip with us, you're, you're probably going to learn that anyways, because I want you to. And you're in my boat, so you're, you're my captive, so, <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, yeah, if it's something you want to learn, it's a ton of fun, and it's incredibly effective, you, you may not catch as many fish as you might with an indicator stick, but you definitely catch those special fish in the river, um, you know, you see pictures of big red sides that, that we have on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, 99% of the time, those are caught with a streamer, so, I suggest you learn how to do it, um, you know, accessing those big fish is, is difficult and you got to get their attention. And, and so we've, uh, we've gotten pretty good at that. I, I say that, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but um, I'm going to show you some flies in a minute here speaking directly of that. So just give us a second here. Okay, so first we're going to just quickly go after uh, or get after the, the dry fly game so these are just a couple different march brown patterns um this one's the thor brown it's got a little cdc puff on the on the top of it two different sizes you can see here um this is actually a relatively small march brown pattern um, we've got a 12 and a 14 and then a 10 and a 12. i suggest having multiple sizes uh more often than not you'll you might get if if it's on you might get one or two on the standard size like this is actually how big they are they're a they're a 10 sometimes shoot i've seen them all the way up to eights um 
but more often than not, you'll get more fish on the smaller bugs, especially these guys. Um, and then throwing emergers, soft tackles, which I don't have out here, but throwing a, a soft tackle behind it or an emerger behind it is a good good way to go as well. Um, don't count on this hatch this time of year though. I see guys that are only throwing dry flies. That's perfectly fine if that's what you wanna do, but um, you know, if you don't hit it on the right day, then you're not gonna be successful. Um, just a couple of nymphs that I really personally like. There's a billion nymphs, but these are almost one, if not both of these are almost always on my nymph stick. The, the jigged hair's ear and the jigged prints. Uh, they're, they're, you know, super basic bent around patterns for, I don't know, shoot, decades and decades, if not a hundred years. Um, but they're they're tried and true and they work really really well in the valley uh, they're just deadly bugs in the valley so um, i'm still fishing split shot with these bugs uh, in the mckenzie i, I think uh, you know you're you're just better off fishing some uh, weight up above these generally i'll tie a knot or you know i'll, I'll do a uh, tippet to tippet connection there with a blood knot or a double surgeons and uh, about you know, 14 to 18 inches up from my first bug. So that is a good game. And uh, also really good game is just the, the little woolly bugger and um, slump buster. Uh, you know, now I'm talking about swinging flies. And honestly, the woolly bugger is definitely tried and true. It's a fantastic bug black, brown, olive, uh, you know, dark olive if you want. Um, great bug. You can nymph it as well. I mean, it's, you know, obviously been around for a long time. Then the slump buster, uh, this is something that we tie here at the shop. It's a fantastic bug, fantastic streamer. For those smaller, um, you know, when the water's a little clear, uh, it's, a, it's a good bug to, to toss around. And right now we actually have pretty low water conditions and it is relatively clear. So um, good bug for that. Um, then as you kind of get, as you go along, this is El Derto. It's a double hooked bug. Uh, you don't have to fish it with two hooks if you don't want to. You can cut the front one off if you like, but it's an articulated bug. Uh, tied with pine squirrel. This is something again that we tie in the shop. Uh, this one's got rubber legs on it <clears throat> This one's just got the, the standard. It's a standard dirt pattern, but uh, Yeah, we've caught a ton of big fish on this bug um, Again, if you're in my boat, you'll be throwing you'll be throwing this bug more than likely or a slump buster uh, depending on your skill um, but uh, yeah, great bug to swing put some action on it as you're swinging fantastic micro spay bug um, man, in my opinion, uh, under normal water conditions, this bug is uh, definitely the fishiest micro spay bug that, um, that you can possibly tie. We'll, we'll, we have a tying video of that. This is basically a, a dirt uh, with the two hooks and it's, it's articulated, but it's jointed. Um, so this is something that Eli here at the shop ties. And it's got it's it's just a little bigger profile, uh, and it, here's in a different color here. Um, fantastic bug. Uh, I don't know exactly what he calls this thing, but it's just another streamer. We're tying them at the shop, so you can pick one up if you like. Uh, and yeah, I would uh, I would suggest you get to know the streamer game. That it, it's a great, honestly, from here until. Oh, November, it, it actually fishes really good in the valley um, and on the Deschutes as well. Uh, it's something that we, we obviously love. We're kind of nerdy about it. And, um, you know, if you've been in here, you, you know that this is just a game that we like to play. We like to, we like to throw a little bit bigger bugs. Notice they're not enormous streamers like you might throw in Montana or something like this. These are on the smaller side. They're all... Yeah, they're all kind of leech slash sculpin. Um, this could be, you know, you could, this could be looked at as a bait fish pattern. It's got a little bit of white in it. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, would highly encourage you to learn how to micro spay fish because it's a ton of, ton of, ton of fun. And you can actually do it with a single hand rod. We have lines designed to do that. Um, 
these guys. You know, this is uh, from Scientific Anglers, the Spaylight, Skagit, uh, fantastic little line. You can put this specific line on a three weight and probably be able to throw something about that big on your three weight or any one of these three, um, the Slump Buster, the Dirt, or a Wooly Bugger and have a ton of fun throwing a, a short little sink tip. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, happy to teach you, uh, ha you know, come on in, uh, consider taking a spay casting lesson with us. Um, it, you know, we try to have fun with it. It's not just about learning, but we like to teach you something and get you to have some fun and, and uh, yeah you will enjoy it. It's a ton of fun and it's a good way to kind of get into the spay game uh, without having to have a 13 foot rod or a 14 foot rod. Um, these are, these micro spay rods are, you know, 11 to 11 and a half feet long. So they're easy to manage and the lines that we throw on them are, are super easy to cast and you'll be off and going in no time.